That's oh, the crumb. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So we'll uh, get these slides rolling in a second. Awesome. All right, thanks, folks, for uh, joining me. Um, so we're here to talk about Boss for Enterprise and Builders. So if you are a builder or with a company trying to build a new Web3 business, uh, you're probably considering, how do I get started with that? Um, and you're really looking at the intersection of social, digital value, and customer participation, community ownership. And this is what I call community commerce. And I think it's really the heart of what makes Web3 very special. And I think there's a lot of new and exciting businesses can be made in this model. And so the boss in this context is an open source cloud platform built to enable this next generation of businesses. And so we're going to go down a journey of this fictional uh, business leader named Idris, and he's starting a new fitness venture. And I'm going to show you from zero to one um, how he can use uh, the boss to get his business off the ground and into a healthy place um, faster than any other way possible. So a little background about Idris's product. It's a B to B to C product. So that means he's building a product that he's going to sell to gyms and fitness communities. And it's going to then help bring customers and consumers into the fold, into this community commerce concept. If you think about fitness, it's very much an individual and a group social journey. If you see different uh, fitness classes and participate in those things, you, you know that. And ultimately, he wants people to be more motivated, to be healthy. He wants to bring them together to have fun and bring revenue for his, his business customers. All right, so from my experience, uh, both as an entrepreneur as well as building new businesses in Web2 companies as well as Web3, I've found there's really four steps to building a new product and getting that off the ground. So I'm going to walk you through that with Idris's product. So the first is to test a hypothesis of for core value. And the most important thing that you want to do at this stage is maximize your speed of learning. You want to go through the design process, the build process, the feedback process, and refine on that as fast as possible. As many iterations as you can get in, the more refined your product will be, the more value it will have. I, I guarantee it. And for Idris, this looks something like this using the boss. So he's going to go to near.org. He's going to find a bunch of components from a contributor called Mintbase. And they've got um, some really great things in NFTs. He can fork that immediately online in the sandbox editor, start making it custom for his own needs and use case. And then he's going to be able to deploy a web application called iFit, um, where he's going to be able to start his user acquisition journey. So here he first makes his profile, shows a little bit about him, searches for Mintbase, finds their components. He sees that they have the Minsta app. And Minsta is a really cool photo sharing app where you can actually mint NFTs from your mobile web browser by just taking pictures. And he thinks that this is going to be a great opportunity to fork and create a way for people to check in on the exercises that they're doing, maybe the different pieces of equipment, or every time they check into the gym, and be able to start earning rewards and start having social experiences around them. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here you go. You see from that photo sharing app that he's got this log, work, log workout button. He's got ability to do rewards through NFTs. And people can already start earning their first one. So this is the fastest way to prototype. I mean, completely decentralized, front end to back end, um, easier than hosting a web app on a CDN and a server cloud. You can do it literally in minutes. It's full stack JavaScript. You don't need to learn anything new. And it's a simple dev environment. No infrastructure, no hosting. Clone those components. All right, so he's got a prototype. He showed it to um, you know, his first customer, and he's trying to build an efficient acquisition channel. This is the next thing you need to do. You need to get users. And when you're getting users, I've always found, and when I've advised startups, I always say two things. On the B2B side, find three business customers that really find value in what you do and say, I would pay for that. And on the B consumer side, find at least 50 positive feedbacks about why they love using your product. If you can do both of those things, you can build an acquisition channel. You can continue to build a business. 
and on near.org with the boss, it's really easy to do that. So his iFit app that he built has a discussion section where people can leave comments so you can instantly get that kind of consumer pulse from that same profile that they're using for that app. And you can create little links that are really easy to share. Either you, know, you can seed them to your best users and they can text them to their friends and it's just near.org slash iFit. Or you can send an email out. Let's say that you know, that first B2B customer was really excited and they want to blast it out to their whole existing customer set. They could send an email out. And with that, what you saw from Ilya with, through FastAuth, they can instantly use the same email, log in, get a near named account through complete decentralization, both using the phone secure chip as well as a decentralized email recovery system. You actually, in seconds, are able to log in just seamlessly and now get started into the app and start logging your workouts and enjoying that experience. And if for whatever reason they were to lose that link or they don't remember, you just go to near.org and you can type search. And we have a really robust type ahead as well as categorical search system that makes it super easy to go find apps or you know, even connect with Idris himself. All right, so this is the most efficient way to acquire users. You've got built-in feedback. You can list your accounts in there. You can onboard no coiners in seconds. Again, we use a system called meta transactions and relayers that those people just come in with their email, and those uh, initial fees are just kind of covered on their behalf. And it's really, really easy discovery through either near.org or quick links. All right, step three. So we're going, this is the exciting part, right? You've got great feedback. You've got users that love. Now it's time to retain as many of them as possible. And why that's important is it doesn't matter what your business model is, whether you're doing a subscription-based model or a transactions-based model, I can guarantee you that the most important metric that you should be looking at is re-engagement. A captive audience will continue to pay, right? So you really need to make sure that people are coming back, and that's a really hard problem. One of the ways you could do that is through social. So on near.org, we have a home page with comments, and we have the ability to kind of have these side context panels where you can add in more information. And here, the iFit whiteboard could be where you logged your uh, you know, exercises that you did and you loved. If you've seen people that do CrossFit, this is actually something they do really commonly. And you can see the upcoming schedule, and you get comments and go back and forth and kind of collaborate about what you love in, in exercising. Very soon, we're going to be able to also give you notifications through mobile web. Um, this is coming really soon. So now when you get those messages, uh, and you get those comments, you come back to the, the web app. And we'll be able to do this through email as well. So lots of ways to keep people coming back. Finally, what you can do is um, something called uh, deploying your own gateway with one click. So if you don't want to have your app on near.org anymore, you want to move it to your own website and you want to have multiple channels, so you could do both channels. You click one button, and you deploy a new gateway, and you can actually see now that that near.org header there is completely white labelable to your brand and needs, and you can customize that so you have your own gateway, as well as the near.org acquisition channel, which really allows you to start, again, what Ilya said, getting that distribution. All right, so fostering community, many ways to re-engage, and fully customizable very, very quickly within one click. So this really is going to help you increase that retention and keep building that revenue. All right, final and most exciting stage, in my opinion, is growing to adjacent markets. So traditionally, within Web3 and Web2, there's really three ways to do this. You can go multi-chain. You can think about like when OpenSea started in Ethereum and then started bringing in Solana NFTs. You can expand to other experiences, which can also be websites or mobile applications or partnerships where you embed your service into somebody else's app to be able to then continue to grow off of their network effects. And then you can, of course, open to new geographies. Generally speaking, you might start in something in one country, and then you want to figure out different ways to continue to grow in other places and localize. So scaling multi-chain. In Idris's example, you could have an Ethereum NFT holder with a sports NFT. And they can then just instantly log in to his uh, app using a MetaMask uh, on Ethereum, which is really exciting. And all the near fees are completely transferred over, which is great. On scaling into new devices, you could do something. This is Sweat Wallet. So it's a fitness uh, um, app in the near ecosystem that's all about walking to earn sweat tokens. You could do an advertisement in there where you get 50% off if you're with your sweat tokens on your first pass with iFit. And that would bring you millions of new potential users or millions of users on sweat in this way. Through relayers, we're actually able to make sure that those sweat tokens then work for iFit and their system as well, which is really exciting. 
And then you can scale geographically, geographically. And in this example, we've changed the visual design to be purple. It's now in Spanish, and this is being relaunched for Spain. And you, all you had to do was click fork from your existing app in a few minutes, change out what the HTML says there, change out the CSS, and then you have actually a specific community that's just for the Spanish-speaking gym goers and fitness aficionados. So you can scale your businesses, works with any chain, extend to any experience with, that can run JavaScript, and 95% reusable. And so really, really easy to just keep finding those new markets. So again, this is community commerce from hypothesis to market expansion on the boss. It's this intersection of social, digital value, and customer participation. And you can sign up today, near.org slash sign up, and you can use FastAuth if you scan this QR code or go to this link and see how easy it is to get started. All right, thank you, everybody.